Welcome to another edition of the Late Night Reaver. I'm your host, Cole Mackley, and alongside me is my co-host, Creighton Evans. How do you think the show's going to go tonight, Creighton? Uh, we'll see. Well, I think it's going to go good. I think it's certainly going to go better than our March Madness brackets. Oh, absolutely. The real madness isn't in the upsets of college basketball games, but in me getting my brackets busted. And while it's common for most people to burn their brackets, we here at the Late Night Reaver like to take, up a, take it up a notch. We like to destroy the thing that gives it life. That felt good. Oh yeah, I definitely got out all my anger. And moving from college basketball to college dorms, Business Insider came out with the top 10 dorms in the nation. Iowa Western housing was too cool to qualify for this list. But that still won't stop us from mentioning the top 10 college housing facilities in the nation. Some of these dorms include a giant ball pit, state-of-the-art technology, fully equipped kitchen, laundry services, and last but not least, a pool and spa for each residency hall. Where you don't need to watch TV. You, you can't even wink, can you? Sadly, no I can't. But that helps me out uh, from paying attention to Julian Henning as he performs some magic tricks and blows our minds. Hi, I'm Julian Henning with the Late Night Reaver. You want to see some people freaked out? Watch. Hi, my name is Julian. What's your name? Allison. Allison, nice to meet you. All right, I got a deck of cards here, completely normal. I want you to actually just take any card you want. All right, look at it, memorize it. I want you to do me a favor, actually sign your name or something meaningful to you on the face of the card. All right. All right, look, we'll take your card, we'll place it back inside, and lose it inside the deck. Now, you remember your card and what it looks like, right? <laughs> All right, look, I'll give the cards a few cuts, maybe some fancy ones. Watch, I want you to hold your hands out for me. Yes. Yeah, look, place your other hand on top of it. Watch, I want you to imagine just that queen of spades. Imagine your card, I'm gonna pull off just the top card. Right here, look. That's not your card. That would've been good though. Been good, yeah, but I want you to imagine just your card. I want you to imagine me taking every card but your card and just vanishing it. Would that be amazing? I want you to think of nothing but your card. Matter of fact, imagine the rest of the cards vanishing. You still full full deck, right? You shouldn't. You don't believe me, do you? The deck's not there. Do you feel it? You shouldn't. Look, open up your hands. What the heck? All the cards turn clear, except for one card. All the cards turn clear except for one card, the Queen of Spades. The deck turns clear except for one card, your card, that sign card. They enjoyed some magic back to you, Cole, at the Late Night Reaver.
Thanks, Julian, for blowing our mind. That was, that was pretty cool, wasn't it? That was just crazy. I can't believe he disappeared the whole entire deck. No. <laughs> and the people were just flipping out. I would have been flipping out, too. Absolutely. Well, Creighton, what's your favorite scary movie? Well, if I had to say someone, I'd probably call, call Ghostbusters. I, I don't think that counts, man. Well, who are you going to call? How about Josh Hurd, a Reaver alumni, now director and author. He produced a movie about paranormal activities, and he got the idea when he was a student here at Iowa Western. We'll sit down and talk with him next, only on the Late Night Reaver. Hello, everyone. I'm here with... Dylan Jackson. And Dylan Jackson, do you believe in ghosts? I do. Have you ever seen a ghost? Thankfully not. How do you know if they're invisible? Well, that's something that helps me sleep at night. Fair enough. Are you a ghost? I might be. I don't know. Just making sure. Welcome back to the Late Night Reaver. Joining us now is Iowa Western alum, who is now a film director and author, Josh Hurd. Thanks for being here today, Josh. Hey, thank you for having me. Now, you just recently had a book and a movie. It's called When Ghost Hunting Goes Wrong, A Brush With Evil. Do you mind uh, giving me a little summary of that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the book uh, essentially follows uh, me and a team when I was originally going to Northwest Missouri State. And we went out to this old abandoned chapel and we were ghost hunting and kind of thrill seeking more or less. And, you know, what we ended up happening was, we, you know, we bit off more than we could chew. Right. And so it took a lot of effort from, you know, a pastor friend of mine in uh, Omaha and things like that to, to really resolve the situation. So then I, uh, I ended up changing colleges. I came here to Iowa Western and I decided let's try this again and let's get a new group of people together and <laughs> hopefully it's better than the last time. Yeah. And, you know, so that's what I did. I put right. up flyers and things like that around campus and sure. got some interest and was telling my friends then about what had happened in Maryville. And they're like, oh, wow, we want to check this out for ourselves. Just get a little braver. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so I'm like, well, that's OK. I really don't want to go there yeah. you know, anymore. Uh, but, you know, peer pressure, how it is. Sure. And so ended up going back and it was basically the exact same scenario where we were, we went down like three nights, and then on the fourth night is when stuff got really, really bad again. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's what I kind of document in, in the book itself. And mm -hmm. then for the documentary film, you know, we, we tell those stories and then, um, you know, really follow like how the book goes. And right. then we decided to take it a step farther. And we we're gonna take the original team of investigators from here at Iowa Western, mm -hmm. And we we're going to go back for four consecutive nights and actively try to elicit some kind of a response out of this demonic type entity that's in this chapel mm -hmm. and really, really push everyone's fear levels and really try to to get this thing to either show itself or or do something to us to right. really show to people that bad things can happen especially if you're, if you're not expecting them to happen. Yeah. Now, was, so. this a, was this a pretty big crew that went down with you for the actual filming of it? Um, we had maybe maybe 10 of us tops. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty. So it was pretty bare bones. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, honestly, like everything that could have gone wrong with this project has gone wrong. And I mean, literally up to the point of 24 hours before filming, mm -hmm. half of the crew, over half of the crew, quit. Really? It was ridiculous. So obviously then, you know, okay, well now long. you're going to be in it and you're going to be running a camera yeah. at times and <laughs> now you're going to be a sound guy and you're going to do this and that. It was, it was interesting, you know, so. Do you think that it had something to do with the haunting of the old chapel? It's, it's been very apparent to me, like, mm -hmm. that even when I was writing the book, there is something that's out there that does not want this story told. Right. For whatever reason that may be. And it's just those little things, minor inconveniences that it's throwing at you. We had to, like, personally at my house, just in the past 30 days, I've had to replace the furnace in my house, a transmission in a vehicle, 
a dishwasher, a clothes dryer. Yeah. I mean, it just little things like that that add up to this gigantic headache. Absolutely. You know? So it just follows you around a little bit. Uh, Absolutely. And it just tries to wreak havoc just enough yeah. to maybe try to get you to toss in the towel. Now, uh, now, where can we get this book and now the movie? The book itself you can find at uh, Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com. Uh, what's the other one? The other big one. Uh, Barnes and Noble, Barnes Amazon, and Amazon, and um, you know, then you can also pick it up um, at Lulu.com. So, um, the the film itself, we're we're just touring it right now. Okay. So we're touring the film. Um, hopefully by October, mm -hmm. you can go to theghostfiles.tv, and it will be available there. Awesome. So well, uh, thank you for joining us today, Josh. Uh, we look forward to seeing your new movie and to learn more about Josh Hurd. Go to joshherd.net, follow him on Twitter, at joshherd1981. And if you'd like to buy his book, visit Amazon and search When Ghost Hunting Goes Wrong, A Brush With Evil. Thanks again, Josh. Thank you. Right after this, we'll be coming back with Durbin and Dylan and review Pee Wee's Big Adventure and Reaver Reviews right here on the Late Night Reaver. man child loses his bike. Who stole it? I don't know! I'm Dylan Chambers and this is Reva Review. So McKenna, uh, why are we reviewing this movie today? Well today we are reviewing Pee Wee's Big Adventure because this month it starts the production of the new Pee Wee Herman film, uh, Pee Wee's Big Holiday. Oh yeah. Um, that's gonna be like a Netflix exclusive, right? Yeah, um, I heard it's, yeah, it's gonna be Netflix exclusive. I don't know why. I think they should do a theatrical review. Uh, uh, release of it. Yeah, um, you know it's kind of great timing, I guess, that we're uh, we decided to do this film because of that reason. Um, so, uh, do you have any connection with this film? Did you watch it as a child, or? I actually never watched Pee Wee's Adventure as a little kid. Um, it wasn't until I was maybe twelve when I saw it. Uh, my brother introduced it to me. It, but my parents watched it as a, I mean, they watched the TV show even before I was even born. So. Yeah, yeah. My I, parents did also, yeah. Um, so the movie is basically based off the television show, which was Pee Wee's Playhouse. And it was more of a kids show, Teletubbies, uh, you know, that kind of show. Well, actually, Pee Wee's Big Adventure came up before the TV show. Oh, it show. did? Okay. Oh, I guess that's me being wrong. Right. <laughs> what are some of your favorite parts of the movie? Uh, well, uh, some of my favorite parts are obviously, you know, the, the main scenes that people always talk about when they talk about this film, like the large Marge scene where he, he's hitchhiking and he gets into the, the truck with the ghost lady or whatever, and she does that spooky face that everyone talks about. It looked like this. <laughs> Traumatized them as a kid. And uh, it brings me to my next point. Uh, a lot of people, uh, well, I guess me in general, uh, think that this kind of plays off of people's innate fears as a child. And uh, what do you think about that? I think so because I see. I remember in the beginning when the clown, uh, there was a clown that was attached to his bike, and then the bike is stolen, and the clown's face turns really evil. And there's a lot of clowns in the movie. Yeah, when the definitely. clowns are working on the bike in the dream sequence, and they're evil looking. Yeah. Um, also, uh, after he like gets his bike stolen, he uh, runs back and sees all these people with all their bikes, and he's thinking, oh, I'm all singled out, and I'm the only one without a bike. Uh, but generally, I thought the writing in this movie was very good. A lot of the jokes were very funny, and um, basically an all-around good movie. How did you feel about it? I think it's a fantastic movie. It's a perfect cult film. It was Tim Burton's first film, actually. He overreacts to everything and screams and yells. And, uh, definitely uh, a great character. Uh, I think everybody should check this movie out at some point. Oh, absolutely. Why not? It's kind of weird, but why not? <laughs> Well, I think that's all the time we have for today. Uh, that was your Reaver Review. 
Uh, from Reaver Reviews to Foreign Reviews, Late Night Reaver reporter Danny Rambo next. Hello everyone, I'm here with... Macy Coffee. And Macy, what's your favorite kind of junk food? Um, red Velvet Oreos. Well, that's pretty unhealthy. Have you ever had something even worse, like a deep fried Twinkie? No. Deep fried Snickers? No. Deep fried Butter Stick? No. <laughs> well, then you're probably going to outlive me. What's your most exotic meal you've ever had? Great. This is a family show. Not like that. No, I mean, what's your favorite foreign food? What's the, what's the weirdest thing you've ever had? Well, there was this one time I took a shot of a quill egg, quill egg wrapped in seaweed. Really? That sounds absolutely disgusting. Dude, it was kind of good. I, I liked it, man. All right. Well, let's see what our international reavers think about products that are made in America. Today, friends from different countries are going to taste test American snacks and give their opinion on how our country is doing. Today, I'm joined with Mark Juggins, and he's from England. We're going to start off with Funyuns. Have you ever had these before? No, they're not. No, they're just a chip. People eat them all the time for snacks, maybe lunches. Okay. How does it taste? It's okay, not great. <laughs> Would you eat this for a snack all the time? Probably not, no. no. I'd have something different. <laughs> Do they have anything like this in your country? Um, nah, nothing like that. No? Okay. Well, maybe... Have you tried Butterfingers before? No, but not. It is... I don't know how to explain it. You just have to try it. I'm gonna just grab a bit. How does that taste? <laughs> not good. No? Oh, what do you not like about it? The not so ever since I had. <laughs> Sour Patch Kids. These look fun. These are kind of sour. Some You're either going to hate them or like them. Okay. How do you feel about this snack? They're okay. They're better. Yeah. You have to have heard of Twinkies though, right? Never. Never? They are delicious. They will change your life. <laughs> do you like it? Mm. What do you like or not like about it? What's your favorite part? Well, not the inside of it. Jones. They are a delicious soda that you must try. Bubble gum inside. Yes. How does that taste? Sugary. Sugary? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You probably wouldn't drink that every day. You <laughs> might gain a couple of pounds from that. These are corn nuts. These are really fun to eat. Careful, they are very hard to eat sometimes. They might hurt your teeth. <laughs> but do not be intimidated by the snack. And our last one is hot tamales. Okay. These are a fun snack. might want to drink your Jones after this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't like it. No. <laughs> Anything like this? How, what are the spicy foods like? Do you have any spicy foods? Mm, we have spicy foods, not really sweets. Yeah. We eat a lot of Indian food. Oh, really? Which is, they don't have it out here. Yeah. Which is really popular at home. You know? Which of these snacks would you probably buy again? Uh, I'd buy the corn nuts. Corn nuts? Nothing yeah. else. Nothing else? <laughs> <laughs> nah. All right, well, thank you for participating in our segment today. For your Late Night Reaver, I'm Danny Rambo. Man, I love Twinkies. Yeah, I'm sure you do. Well, as we say goodbye for this edition of the Late Night Reaver, here's Iowa Western's Women Ensemble 
and directed by choir director Luke Johnson. I'm Cole McAfee with Creighton Evans. We'll see you around campus, Reavers. One, two, and up. Uh.